you're you're an admirer of Eric Neumann and of yes. Carl Jung. Yeah, and that's the Neumann connection is really interesting because I think he's a bloody genius. Yes. I really like The Great Mother is a great book and a really a great warning that book and also the origins and history of consciousness is one of my, one of my most influential books. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's so interesting. Yeah. I read an essay yeah. that you wrote. Uh, I, I don't remember when it the was. Lecture I gave on Neumann at the NYU. Yes. Yes, it's always been staggering to me that that book hasn't had the impact that it should have had. I mean, Jung himself, in the preface to that book, wrote that that was the book that he wished that he would have written. It's very much associated with Jung's symbols of transformation, and it was a major influence on my book Maps of Meaning, which was an attempt to outline the universal archetypes that, that are portrayed in the kind of religious structures that you, that you put forward. But the thing that I really see happening, and you can tell me what you think about this, in, in Neumann's book, consciousness, which is masculine, symbolically masculine for a variety of reasons, is, is viewed as rising up uh, against the countervailing force of tragedy from an underlying feminine, symbolically feminine unconsciousness, right? And it's something that can always be pulled back into that unconsciousness. That would be the microcosm of that would be the Freudian Oedipal mother familial dynamic where the mother is so over uh, protective and all-encompassing that she interferes with the development of the competence not only of her sons but also of her daughters, of her children in general. And it seems to me that that's the dynamic that's being played out in our society right now, is that there's this, and it's, it's related in some way that I don't understand to this, to this insistence that all forms of masculine authority are nothing but tyrannical power. So the symbolic representation is tyrannical father with no appreciation for the benevolent father and benevolent mother with no appreciation whatsoever for the tyrannical mother, right? And that's that. And because I thought of ideologies as fragmentary mythologies, that's where they get their archetypal and psychological power, right? And so in a balanced representation, you have the terrible mother and the great mother, as, as Neumann laid out so nicely, and you have the terrible father and the great father, so that's the fact that culture mangles you half to death while it's also promoting you and developing you. You have to see that as balanced, and then you have the heroic and adversarial individual. But in the postmodern world, and this seems to be something that's increasingly seeping out into the culture at large, you have nothing but the tyrannical father, nothing but the destructive force of masculine consciousness, and nothing but the benevolent, benevolent great mother. And it's, a, it's an appalling ideology, and it seems to me that it's sucking the vitality, which, which is exactly what you would expect symbolically, it's sucking the vitality out of our culture. You see that with the increasing demolition of of young men, um, and not only young men, in terms of their academic performance, which like they're falling way behind in elementary school, way behind in junior high, and bailing out of the universities like mad. 